Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will share with you my latest upgrades on the largest telescope I have, which is a 10-inch mid LX200 EMC. The telescope is almost fully automated and this video will be definitely useful for those folks who have either exactly the same telescope or a similar one and want to discuss the photography using it. And at the end of the video I'll share with you my first long exposure time project where I've collected 18 hours worth of exposure time on the target. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. First, let's talk about the telescope a bit. It all started with an idea of connecting the Cerizona reducer with the telescope and making it more suitable for deep sky photography. As I was getting more experience there, I was also facing some problems and I have posted three videos about the telescope already where I basically share some tips and tricks that I've made and uh, if you guys are interested in watching those videos, I'll leave links to all of them in the description down below. Now what I want to do is to show you how I was able to organize everything there so that I can successfully run my imaging sessions with the telescope itself, the Arizona reducer and IMX571 sensor. So this is how telescope looks like. I control it using uh, this mini PC on Windows using Nina. Uh, here I also got the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Mini that I use as a power distribution to basically power everything. Uh, also from the power box I got two two heaters running that go directly to the corrector plate on the telescope. I think I can yep, show it to you. So yeah guys, what I do is basically, since I run off axis guiding, that I don't need a separate dew heater for a guider, but I kind of use two strips instead of one, as what I noticed is like one isn't enough uh, to prevent the corrector plate from the dew, so two dew strips solved an issue and I've never experienced any issues with the dew getting on the corrector plate of the telescope. This part works great. Um, yeah, I kind of have the dew shield actually, but it looks kind of clunky and uh, I just don't really like how it looks like. Maybe uh, later on I'll come up with a different solution, maybe something like 3D printed, I don't know yet, but this solution works for me right now. So yeah guys, as you can see the mini PC and power box, they located on the top of the telescope and the way I connected them to the OTA itself is really simple. So the OTA, it has different screws like along this side and along the other side as well. What I did is that I unscrewed a couple of them. I attached two dollars plate from Lowe's. Works great for photography as well. I attached the plate. I put the screws back in. Uh, it's slightly bended, but just a little. I'm not quite happy with the cable management here. Is uh, I'm kind of uh, working my way uh, to make this telescope even better. Like every time I work on it. But later I might switch and uh, reorganize my cable management. Uh, now let's switch to covering the most important part of this video basically which is organizing the imaging train. Alrighty, so in my previous video I covered that that was the original adapter from a three and a quarter inch female thread to SET male thread that I didn't need as that created vignetting when using IMX571 sensor camera. So what I did is I got this adapter from Scope Stuff that basically brings three and a quarter inch male thread down to M63 female thread. And what I did, I took this adapter from my SV Bonnie telescope that has M63 male thread on one side and two inch just like a compression ring on the other side. Now in my previous video, a couple of guys asked me about like whether they can get this adapter from SV Bonnie or not. I reached SV Bonnie out and uh, I haven't heard back yet. But the thing is what I found is uh, on the website, I think it's called Telescope D or something. It's a German uh, website and I'm gonna just uh, leave you guys link in the description. I found exactly the same adapter over there. It has M63 thread and uh, two inch compression ring on the other end. And uh, if you guys are interested, you can just get adapter from them. Or if you guys have any different source where you can get this one, just share in the comments below and uh, people will be happy about it. Anyway, the adapter was located right over here. But what I also had in my previous video is I had an issue with the electronic focus. where basically the imaging train was located kind of close to the OTA and I couldn't achieve 360 degrees of rotation just because of the guide camera, 
you're gonna see a couple of clips from the previous video and I was on the lookout for an extension adapter like extension tube that has M63 on one side and M63 on the other side there are a couple of solutions but some of them quite expensive in fact like in the United States we have a couple of companies that can build a custom-made adapter but the price is astronomical what I came up with eventually and that's I'm really surprised guys so I got this rotator from SV Boini. it's called SV210 I believe it has M63 male thread on one end M63 female thread on the other end and uh, the back focus of the rotator the thickness I believe is like 20 millimeters or so rotator easily installs right next to the scope stuff adapter then I got this adapter back in so yeah this part is basically ready for the imaging gear all right and now let's take a look at the imaging gear so here I got the Arizona Schmidt Kessegren reducer comma corrector and it is a 0.63x reducer but with different Schmidt Kessegren telescopes it works differently and currently with my configuration I'm gonna put the exact number on the screen but I believe it gets the telescope down from f10 to f 6.67 something like that so not exactly f6.3 but still better than an f10 uh, right after that I got Wonder Astra rotator that has m54 thread then I have like an extension tube over there right after I have a top tech of axis guider and uh, guys I also have a video about off axis guiding I kind of thought it's going to be hard to do off axis guiding on this telescope but actually that's way uh, easier than I expected the, my guide camera is ZW ASI 220mm mini and by the way the guiding is done easily thanks to the camera before I had ZW120mm mini and uh, my guiding results were not as good as uh, with the uh, the better sensor so this is something to think about as well after the OEG I got my filter wheel that has five different filters uh, with a two inch size and right at the end I got my ZWO 2600 MC Pro camera that has IMX 571 sensor it is APS-C size sensor and everything works really well with uh, the, that sensor size with the reducer and the telescope Yes, I have just a bit of vignetting on my images, but they easily corrected with flats. And uh, on the screen, you can see a couple of my test images that I got with the telescope. And at the end of the video, I have another image to share. So everything works perfectly. And talking about, once again, the distance from the camera gear to the OTA, the distance is perfect. In case I want to do any rotations, I can do that easily like uh, the problem I had before that this part was located kind of close to the OTA and the OAG would stack with the uh, ZW electronic focuser now that works really great and no issues whatsoever and uh, finally what I want to show you guys is this electronic focuser so yeah originally I had a Crayford style focuser installed but it gave me some vignetting because Schmidt Cassegrain thread size is kind of small for that sensor the reducer I decided to work on the original focuser I got a couple of bearings that I mentioned in my previous video anyway the idea is that I've had quite a few imaging sessions already and out of focus your routine was running great in Nina all right guys I just want to briefly show you my test imaging session this is my very first time using the telescope after the whole months of clouds, constant rain and everything. What I wanted to show you here is how my guiding looks like, how my curve, the focusing curve looks like. So pretty much I'm guiding with an off-axis guider and the camera I'm using is zwo 20 mm Mini. As you can see, guiding performs really well, I believe. Then this is how the focusing curve looks like. The other focusing routine runs smoothly and I've done a few of them already pretty much let me uh, cancel the imaging and just show you like this one this out of focus I did 128 this is a previous one as you can see parabola looks perfect here is one before so yeah everything looks perfect and I'm kind of happy with the results I'm getting on the telescope and uh, for those that are interested guys 
if you want to possibly try the settings that I use on autofocuser. So I have four initial offset steps. This is my threshold. I use binding two by two. Uh, my autofocus step size is 100 steps. I, the exposure time is 10 seconds. And I have a really huge out backlash set at 1200. I also use a crop ratio of uh, 0.9, which basically kind of crops out uh, the outer area of this rectangle and uh, uh, doesn't count whatever the stars are there just because it's like a vignetting part and uh, I just decided to do it and uh, as you can see I'm getting pretty good results. So yeah, this is kind of what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, the only flaw that I have right now is that since my main mirror is not locked, then I experience mirror shift. So what I basically do in Nina, I just check mark that basically runs out of focusing routine anytime when HFR uh, increases by, like I left the same 5% default size. So the thing is, is that when the telescope imaging the target and over time it changes the physical position of the tube, the focus might switch because of the mirror shift, Nina sees it and uh, if the focus is changed, then it just runs out of focusing routine again and the image is back to normal and uh, pretty much yes as i already said i've run a few imaging sessions like this one already and no issues whatsoever the only problem i have is that when i switch the telescope from one target to another then of course nina automatically uh, when it tries to play solve the image sometimes it cannot do that if the telescope went out of focus by a really kind of good amount but what I do is just manually, I run out of focus routine and then I send the telescope back to plate solving and kind of uh, centering the position of the object. I believe in advanced sequencer, Nina, you can kind of uh, reorganize that and uh, first of all, slew the telescope, then do out of focusing routine and then center the object. Uh, if it's possible, let me guys know in the comment section below as I really haven't uh, looked into that yet. But anyway, so far, everything has been working overall really, really well. And that's what I want to share with you guys in this video. So yeah, this is how everything works. And I really hope that this video gives you some ideas of how you can deal with your mid lx 200 or a similar telescope. Now, as you see, I got uh, this also a uh, fork style mount right behind me. And what I want to try to do now is to place this telescope back on the fork and uh, basically see if I can do any imaging, in particular deep sky photography, uh, with this setup. You see, the reason I deforked the telescope originally was the alt azimuth nature of this mount that wouldn't allow me to take long exposures without field rotation. But since I have the rotator installed now, then this issue might be resolved. And if everything goes well, that means that my EQ6R Pro mount will become available for another telescope. And I guess I will share with you my results in the next video, once again, if everything goes well. So right now it's kind of really good time to subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in seeing the results. Well, I guess I got everything for this video. At the end, you'll see my final image of the Messier 27 Nebula that I was kind of able to get in the break from the clouds. I really hope that you're going to enjoy this image as I was enjoying capturing it with this big telescope. And uh, of course, guys, if you enjoyed watching this video, please don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I really hope to see you in my future videos. But until next time, clear skies, guys.